easy math okay so now we are going to discuss about functions okay in previous video we discussed about trigonometric functions if you haven't checked that go check it out today let's learn about inverse trigonometric functions and some special functions <music> First, inverse trigonometrical functions. Okay, what what are the inverse trigonometric functions? If sine y is equal to x, then the value of y. What is the value of y? Then, based on that concept, we have the concept called as inverse trigonometric functions. Now, what is the graph of sine inverse x? As you can see, this is the graph of sine inverse x. Here, sine pi by 2 is 1. So, at y is equal to pi by 2, at y is equal to pi by 2, the value of x is 1. And the value of sine minus pi by 2 is minus 1. So, if the value of y is minus pi by 2, then the value of x is 1. What is the domain and range of a sine inverse x? Okay, the domain is, as you can see, it varies from minus 1 to 1. And the range is, it is possible between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Now, y is equal to cos inverse x. Okay, this is the graph of the cos inverse x. As you can see, this is the mirror of y is equal to cos x through the line y is equal to x. Here, cos y is equal to cos inverse x means that cos y is equal to x as discussed before. So, here the variables x and y interchange. So, it will be the mirror through the line y is equal to x. And the domain of this function is minus 1 to 1 because cos and sin are only possible between minus 1 and 1. And the range is 0 to pi because the value of cos at 1 is 0 and the value of cos at minus 1 is pi. Okay, now tan inverse x. Okay, this is the graph of tan inverse x. As you can see, it is possible between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. And it is not derived at pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. So, it is the closer interval in between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Okay, here the domain is all real numbers and range is closed interval of minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2. Okay, now cot inverse x. As you can see, this is a mirror of tan inverse x. And here the domain is as before r. And range is closed interval between. Okay. This is the graph of y is equal to cosecant inverse x. As we know, cosecant inverse x is not the results of cosecant x or all real numbers except the closed interval in between minus 1 and 1. And cosecant is not possible at 0. So, the domain of this function is r minus minus 1 comma 1. Close interval between minus 1 comma 1. And range belongs to minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 minus set of 0. It is not possible at 0. Okay, now secant inverse x. This is somewhat reverse of the cosecant inverse x. The outcomes of secant inverse x are r minus the closed interval minus 1 comma 1. And here the range is, it will be somewhat similar to cos. So, the range of this is 0 comma pi minus pi by 2 because secant pi by 2 is infinity. Now, absolute value function or modulus function. Okay, you all will be using modulus in so many, 
so many chapters like coordinate geometry and and chapters like that and y is equal to modulus x means it is the numerical value of x means y can only have positive values of x as you can see here x is possible for all real numbers but y is only possible for positive real numbers absolute value function or modulus function is defined as modulus x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and minus x if x is less than 0 graphical interpretation of modulus of a function how is it defined in graphically okay geometrically modulus x represent the distance of point p x comma 0 or q minus x comma 0 from origin as you know distance formula is root x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square and distance should not get negative values right so they formulated this formula so modulus can also can't also have modulus can also can't have negative values we can define modulus as the distance between origin and a point as it can only have positive values okay there are some properties to modulus functions similar to logarithmic functions okay the first property is modulus x whole square is equal to x square okay how is this possible because if we square a number negative values will get positive square and positive values will get negative square so modulus x square will be equal to x square and root x square is equal to modulus x and square root of any number is plus or minus but square root of x square is equal to modulus x means negative values will have positive and positive values will also have positive okay the third property is modulus of modulus x is equal to modulus minus x is equal to modulus x because if you do a modulus to a negative value it becomes positive and if you do a modulus to positive value it becomes positive so the second modulus is unnecessary and the fourth property is modulus x is equal to max minus x comma x if we did y is equal to modulus x then if we take two lines y is equal to x and y is equal to modulus x the maximum values of those represents the modulus function minus modulus x is equal to okay you can get that easily it will be minimum minus x comma x okay maximum a plus b the maximum a plus b is equal to a plus b by 2 plus modulus of a minus b by 2 maximum of two functions or two variables by doing this a plus b by 2 plus modulus of a minus b by 2 okay, here maximum means you should have maximum value if you use modulus to a minus b by 2 then if a is bigger it will be a minus b by 2 if b is bigger it will become b minus a by 2 so if we add those if a is bigger it becomes 2a by 2 which is a if b is bigger it becomes 2b by 2 which is b so we are getting maximum of a comma b okay minimum a comma b will be opposite of that a plus b by 2 minus modulus of a minus b by 2 okay eighth property is modulus of x plus y will be less than or equal to modulus x plus modulus y the minimum possibility is equal to because they can't be smaller than because modulus can only have positive values right so the modulus 
x plus modulus y will have at least the possible value by x plus y. Modulus of x plus y means if we take modulus x plus modulus y, if y is negative, if modulus y is negative, then only there is possibility of modulus x plus y will being greater than the modulus x plus modulus y. Okay, and modulus x plus y is equal to modulus x plus modulus y if x y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, how is this possible? If we take x y, then it should be greater than or equal to 0. So, x and y both should be greater than 0 or equal to 0. Or both should be negative. So, if we do both negative or both positive, then we will have it equal to modulus x plus modulus y. Okay, and modulus x minus y is equal to modulus x plus modulus y if x y is less than or equal to 0. Okay, here modulus x minus modulus y. Here x y is less than or equal to 0 means any 1 should be negative. Here if x is negative it becomes x plus y modulus of Minus x minus y. If we take minus common, it becomes modulus of minus into x plus y. Minus is not possible, so modulus x plus y. Here you will get modulus x plus modulus y. It is derived from our previous one. That it is right. And modulus x is less than or equal to a. And a is positive. That implies a will be in between minus a and a. Or x belongs to closed interval of minus a comma a. Fourth property it is modulus x is greater than or equal to a and a is positive then that implies x is less than or equal to minus a or x is greater than or equal to a or x belongs to minus infinity comma minus a union a comma infinity. Okay, thirteenth property is modulus x is less than or equal to a and a is negative then there is no solution for x. And if modulus x is greater than or equal to a and a is negative, then x is a real number. If modulus x is in between two variables a and b, then where a and b are positive, then minus x will be in between minus a, minus b or minus a or x will be in between a or b. Signum function. What is a signum function? Okay, signum means it is the, it is related to modulus. And if y is equal to signum x, that means that it is modulus x by x or x by modulus x if x is not equal to 0. And 0 if x is equal to 0. Okay, then what is the difference in this? Okay, here if x is negative, then in modulus it becomes positive. But here it will be negative. So we will get negative value. And for x is equal to positive, we will get a positive value. So it will be 1 if x is greater than 0, minus 1 if x is less than 0, and 0 if x is equal to 0. So this is the graph of a signum function. As you can see, the range of this is all real numbers and the, the domain of this is all real numbers and range is set of minus 1, 0, 1. Our next topic is greatest integer function. What is a greatest integer function? Or step up function okay the x in square brackets indicates the integral part of x okay greatest integer what does this name do here greatest integer means that the greatest integer 
which is less than x. It is also called as floor of x. Let us integer of 2.3202 or some will be 2 and greatest integer of 0 0.23 will be 0. Okay, what is the greatest integer of an integer? It will be the same integer. And for negative values also to be for that. And in general, n is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to n plus 1. That is greatest integer will be n.